happening, party people? What's happening? I'm your host with the most, Mr. Ronald, and welcome to, yes, another episode of Three Years of Hip Hop, where we review 1,000 songs from 1979, 2002, 2019. And party people, one thing that we keep hearing is that you guys would love to hear the songs that we are reviewing. Well, we heard you. That's right. We heard you. And party people, rest assured, we are working on something that will allow you to do so. Stay tuned, party people. More on that topic in the next couple of weeks. So today, party people, we will be reviewing Nice For What by uh, Drake, which was released in 2018 from the double album Scorpion. And uh, it's the first song we review by uh, Mr. Dizzy Drake. Um, not was not my first choice. Okay, I actually wanted to go with the first single, but whatever, you know. Like I was like, you know what? I really enjoyed this song, and I was like, you know what? Let's put it on. You know, let's put it on. So party people. Mr. Ron's week and what's up with the baby situation? What is up with that? Yo, the baby, you cannot, you cannot, you know, say, you know, stuff about like, you know, the gay community like that, man. Not, not in 2021. It's unacceptable. You know, it's unacceptable. And those two lame apologies, one that disappeared and that was just, that was just, That was just bad press, you know. That's a PR crisis, you know. Yeah, but then again, you know what? I'm sure the baby has the means, you know, to get over that. You know, his career is fairly new. He's young, you know. And I kind of have to side with uh, 50, who basically said that the baby was, is a rapper that just basically uh, cross on the superstar side. And, you know, so basically he doesn't know how to behave at that level. You know, again, that's, that's it. And I kind of like agree, you know, like with uh, 50 Cent. Again, when you become so big, you need a team of people, you know, like working on, on, on your image. And But even that, I think like it's just common knowledge. You just don't diss the LGBTQ community uh, like that you know like that's just that's just ain't cool you know that's just ain't cool and on top of that you don't know who quest love quest love is man you know know your craft know your craft man you know anyways i hope the baby uh, will be able to bounce back from this you know he, he he can he can you know all right, party people. I think a few weeks ago I mentioned how, like, I heard one track from Kanye's uh, Kanye West's new album, and I was not surprised. And yet again, the week after, I heard Jesus Lord featuring The Locks and J Electronica, an 11 minute long track, and I was surprised. Okay, I was surprised again from my point of view. Kanye's last good album was My Dark Twisted uh, Fantasy. You know, that kind of like gave his life a second career. From my point of view, I think that after that, Kanye's been somewhat coasting, you know? And I also feel that, well, you know, Kanye was always religious, you know? I mean, like he did Jesus Walks, but I just feel that, you know, when someone's career is washed up, you kind of like turn religious. You know, it's a nice sell. Now, I'm not saying Kanye is washed, you know, but he ain't no fresh fish. You know, let's, 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 you know, let's be honest here. You know, Kanye has been on since like early 2000. You know, he's been, that's 20 years, you know, in the industry, you know. And the track was dope, you know, so the internet was like, oh yeah, Kanye's best verse ever. I'm like, okay, calm down. It's a good verse. Okay, it's a good verse. J Electronica's verse was ill. You know, I had to break out a couple of books just to get those references, you know, these religious references. So, yeah. What's up with J, man? J Electronica. Two albums that are terrible. 
but yet the guy has like three singles that probably will make the top 1000 you know exhibit c which i'm working on the review these lyrics are just ill exhibit a and eternal sunshine of the spotless mind i believe that is the title that 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 was ill that was like super original too but then now from my point of view i don't think j electronica can put a decent album together well he proved it he proved that he couldn't you know Anyways, party people, great track, Jesus Lord, more than 11 minutes. So, Drake, nice for what? Why did I choose this song? Because it's, it's dope. That's it, you know. I think it's a good Drake song, and not only that, but I think that the way that the song was put together, there's something in it for both generations, young and new, you know. And people, fun fact. The Drake comes from a musical family. His father, Dennis Graham, played the drums for Jerry Lee Lewis. And his uncle, Larry Graham, was a bassist for Prince. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. And party people, for originality, okay, courtesy of Discog, I give this track a 3.75 on 5. Delivery party people, delivery which stands for lyrics and flow. So I have to say that while doing my research on the Drake, I kind of like got to appreciate him a little bit more, you know. Back to the track, the list of credited writers and producers is just insane. You know, Drake, Lauren Hill, Ghostface, Method Man, Old Dirty Bastard, Murder Beats, Crazy, crazy. So while I was listening to the song, you know, over and over again, I felt that there was a deeper meaning, you know, to that track, you know, shout out to different feminine struggles. You know, I do agree that it's a breath of fresh air when instead of objectifying women, the song emp empowers them instead. You know, for me, that song was like a uh, uh, parallel to 90s hip hop, you know, so I chose one verse, you've been inside, you know, like to lay low. I've been peeping what you bring to the table. Working hard, girl, everything paid for. First, last phone bill, card note, cable. So cool lyrics, like nice lyrics, you know, empowering, positive, you know, like the girl, she's saying like, you know what? I take care of my own bills, you know? I don't have to, you know, exchange sexual favors from a man you know to pay my bills you know that was really 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 cool you know really uh, uh, nice lyrics a little too simple for my taste okay a little too simple energetic delivery you know uh clear cadence however these are not the most complex rhymes you know that and i and i don't think drake was going for that you know and party people courtesy of genius.com and this is why for delivery, which stands for lyrics and flow, I give it a 3.75 on 5. Production, party people, which is beat, mixing, scratching if there's any. So, producers, who produced this? Okay, here's the lineup. Murder Beat, Black and Mild, Fifth Ward, Weeby, and 40. Okay, straight up Southern Bounce Track, okay? So, Murder Beat, Shane Lee Lindstrom, who also has produced Antisocial, that's the new Migos joint that came out this year. Uh, Motorsport, another, you know, Migos song featuring Cardi B and Nicki Minaj, you know, which came out in 2017. Black and Mild, he doesn't have m uh, such a hefty bag, but he did In My Feelings by Drake, okay? Ride or Die. Megan Thee Stallion 2019, you know, that's, uh, these are still, like, very strong names. Four samples deep, okay, we also got uh, the second generation sample, Lauren Hill, who sampled Can It Be So Simple by The Woo, who sampled it from Gladys Knight and the Pips, from the track We, we Were, Try to Remember, released in 1973. Already sampled in seven songs 
you know, and, and that's going to be a third generation sampling, come to think about it, you know? Yeah. So party people, courtesy of who sample, and this is why I give it a four on five. So party people, it's time for another ticky ticky top five. five. So here four, are my top three, five two, Drake one. songs. Actually, you know what? I have to say that I actually found more songs that I that I actually enjoyed from uh, Drake. Yeah, you know. So here it goes, and they're not in any particular order. I'll go with the Money in the Grave, released in 2019. Probably gonna make the top. Nonstop Scorpio in 2018. I discovered that track while I was watching Last Chance You. Yeah. <laughs> Dope track. Like the beat is. Ooh. Of course, nice for what from uh, Scorpio 2018. Best I ever had, which was Drake's first uh, single, which came out in uh, 09, 2009. And Headlines, which came out in 2011. And Party People, this is my top five. My top five Drake songs. Party people, before we get back to the review, at 40 Years of Hip Hop, we use Buzzsprout for our podcast. They get your show listed on every podcast platform available. We were able to get 10,000 downloads within a year as Buzzsprout members, okay? So you will get a great looking podcast platform, an audio player that you can drop into other websites, even WordPress templates. You will also benefit from detailed analytics and tools to promote your episodes like audio and video snippets of your podcast called Soundbites. However, for me, the thing that totally, you know, made it is that I get to generate a second revenue by, by talking about something that I'm super passionate about. Think about it. You're probably a fan of, of something out there. Try podcasting about it. It's easy, fun and can easily generate a second uh, revenue. So party people, yes, get started for free. That's right, no credit card required. Cancel anytime, okay? And you will receive uh, a $20 gift certificate after your second paid invoice. That's right. Link below in our episode, in our episode notes. Buzzsprout is the way to go. And now back to the review. So party people, relevance and longevity. Is this song still relevant? Was it able to stand the test of time? Well, the song is just three years old and I feel that it's still gaining momentum towards being a, I would call it a post modern day classic as a maybe a pre COVID day anthem. I don't know, I'm just bugging, I'm, I'm just bugging. The video features guest appearances from, oh my God, the list is huge. Olivia Wilde, Misty Copeland, Issa Rae, Rashida Jones, Jordan Dunn, Tracy Ellis Ross, Tiffany Haddish, Yara Shahidi, Zoe Saldana, Elizabeth and Victoria Lejon Jarta. I'm sorry for that, I destroyed that name. Letitia Wright. Bria Vanite, yo, yikes. <laughs> Emma Roberts, Sid, Michelle Rodriguez, and of course the Drizzy Drake himself. And yo, on YouTube, this guy got like 378 million views with his 481,000, uh, uh, yeah, thousand followers. So, and that's why party people for rele for relevance and longevity, I give it a four on five, party people, four on five. Fun fact, Drake wrote this song with Murder Beats while playing NBA 2K, while they were just chilling at, at the Drake crib, Drake headquarters, you know? Impact, powerful impact boom from the planet impacted me, somewhat impacted me, I would say. Call me to, you know, pay a little more attention to Drake and not, you know, to get out of, to take my head out of my ass and just say, okay, he's a little bit more than a pop icon, you know? And not only that, but I feel like that, that track has a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit for everyone, you know? The Wu sample for the old heads, the bouncy beat for the club, 
you know, the club goers, you know, and of course, Drake's big ass commercial smile, you know. I, I do enjoy some of Drake's music, you know, I do enjoy some of his music. And yes, you know, but you know what? I'm not going to get into it right away. I'm not going to get, I, I, I need to basically uh, pick my words, you know. Of course, Billboard fifth best song of 2018. Rolling Stone said it's the number 54 songs in the best songs of the 2010s. Okay, from the decade. The song was certified in 10 different countries. And in the US only, it went five times platinum. Okay, five times platinum. I counted over 33 different charts the song topped. 16 different end of the year charts. Not only that, but the Drake beat himself. <laughs> Meaning the previous song that was at number one was God's Plan. And Nice For What took its place and it stayed 17 weeks on the billboard charts and party people that's why i gave it a five on five for impact so party people a little recap from uh, the dizzy drake with nice for what originality 3.75 you know he doesn't reinvent the wheel you know it's a nice track something for old heads as long as as well as you know the new generation, nice lyrics, okay, nice delivery, the way that he chops those words, a little too simple for me, I would like uh, to hear something that's a little more abstract, something that would make me think a little bit more, but definitely still, still good, it's good lyrically, acceptable, acceptable, production is majestic, okay, I think that's a big part of the song, and of course this song is still relevant today and i think that it will be it will be a modern classic and one of the most impactful impactful songs of 2018 not only that probably of 2010 i'd have to check the stats and party, party people this is why i give it a 20.5 20 on 25 for 80 percent that's right so party people, thanks for sharing this moment together. Subscribe, like, share, and party people, support 40 years of hip hop by buying us a coffee so that we could continue dropping these amazing weekly podcasts. Tune back next week as I will be reviewing Follow the Leader by Eric B. and Rakim, released in 1998. This is your host with the most, Mr. Ron, wishing you a happy Honolulu. Peace. And I'm out.